Listen, welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You know... <laughs> Folks, you know, it, is, it is hard to imagine you could be this shocked every day yeah. by the Trump administration. I mean, That's not just a little, freshly shocked. Every single day. Never I think ended. it's because every day they attach the electrodes to a different part of us. <laughs> and boy, uh, boy, boy. let's just say that today they had to shave us first <laughs> just to get contact. Mm. Because... Mm. Americans of every political stripe have been horrified by Trump's Helsinki hell-sucking. <laughs> Where Putin was playing chess while Trump was eating his own checkers. <laughs> choking hazard. It's a choking hazard. They should have given it to him. On the box. And everybody around Trump has spent this entire week trying to put distance between Trump and Putin. So this whole sort of thing can be behind us, and the administration can go back to the people's business of caging toddlers. <laughs> But today, today, after all that, Donald Trump tweeted this. The summit with Russia was a great success, except with the real enemy of the people, the fake news media. I look forward to our second meeting. I don't know where this coffee cup came from. Hold on. <laughs> Second meeting? Second meeting, because the first one went so well. <laughs> it's just like the exciting sequel coming out this summer, Titanic 2, here we go again. <laughs> this time it ends well. But, you know, that's kind of vague. Second meeting could happen, could not happen. Where would he even meet with a universally condemned war criminal strongman who personally ordered the attack on our election? Sarah Sanders tweeted just a few moments ago saying that the president asked his national security advisor, John Bolton, to invite, invite Vladimir Putin to Washington this fall. <laughs> wow. Where does the mug keep coming from? I'm sorry. I don't. Are you okay? He's inviting him to Washington. Nothing could have gone worse than your meeting in Helsinki. It embarrassed our country. It enraged our allies. It strongly reinforced the idea that Putin's got something on you. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time your party turned against you even a little. So let's collude again, like we did last summer. Thanks, guys. Guys, thanks so much for cleaning all the poop off me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go make a snowman out of turds. This meeting, this, I'd say this meeting mm -hmm. is going to be really a tough one for Director of National Intelligence and Statler being informed of Waldorf's demise, <laughs> Dan Coats. Now, you may remember Trump threw Coats and his intelligence agencies under the bus to side with Putin in Helsinki, so it is hard to imagine the look on his face when he heard about this. Luckily, you don't have to imagine it, because <laughs> he was giving a live interview when the news broke. We have some breaking news. The White House has announced on Twitter that Vladimir Putin is coming to the White House in the fall. Say or that again. <laughs> Dan, would you like to borrow my mug? <laughs> because uh, I get his reaction. I understand. I, I said, what, I'm sorry, what, what, what? I understand his reaction because it is hard to believe. Can we check with someone? Because I don't want him walking this thing back tomorrow. Look, I've reviewed the transcript and I need to make a small clarification, okay? I said, I'm inviting Vladimir Putin to Washington. I meant to say, I'm inviting Vladimir Putin <laughs> to Washington. Now, Mr. President, you, you, you just, you just, you just found the strength to admit 
that Putin is personally responsible for attacking our election. So let's invite him to the White House. Look, I want Putin for a sushi dinner. I want Cosby for the slumber party. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein for movie night. And security will be handled by MS-13. Make it happen. <laughs> here's how disastrous, here's how disastrous that first summit was. We don't even know the bad parts yet. Mm. Because remember the two hours where they were alone with just their translators? We may never know what they said, but they said something. Because Tuesday, Russia's embassy tweeted, the Russian Defense Ministry are ready for the practical implementation of agreements reached in Helsinki between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. What agreements? Okay, Vlad, you give me your Capri Sun, your Lunchables, <laughs> and two of your Oreos, I will give you Alaska and Eric. <laughs> okay, is it a deal? <laughs> is it a deal? Is it a, is it a, is it, is it, is it, is it, uh, uh, uh. Now, there is one possible deal we know about, because in the press conference, uh, Trump mentioned an offer Putin made about the 12 Russian intelligence officers that Robert Mueller indicted uh, for election interference. What he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer, okay? He gave me an incredible deal. I mean, he said he never does this, and his manager's really pissed at him. <laughs> but he threw in power steering and AM, FM radio, and he promises to make Europe just go away. <laughs> Here's the actual deal. Putin says Russians would interrogate those 12 Russians, and Mueller's team could watch. But in exchange, Russians would then also get to interrogate some Americans they don't like, specifically Obama's ambassador to Moscow, Michael McFaul, a nemesis of the Kremlin because of his criticisms of Russia's human rights record. That idea is obviously ridiculous. So they're thinking about it. Russian authorities yesterday named several Americans who they want to question, including a uh, former ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul. Does President Trump support that idea? Is he open to having U.S. officials questioned by Russia? Uh, the president's going to meet with his team, and uh, we'll let you know when we have an announcement on that. Of course, the State Department, what's the word? Went ape. <laughs> One. Is that the word? Is that the word? That's the word. Not sure. That's the word. Two words. Yeah, Two words. One current U.S. diplomat said, the president has first and foremost his interest at the top of his mind as opposed to the government's. That's very clear between <laughs> on our NATO allies and <laughs> kissing Putin's ass. Either he's compromised by Putin or he's a pussy, in which case he should grab himself. from a diplomat. <laughs> so by definition, that's the most diplomatic way to put it. <laughs> but it's not just diplomats who are shocked. Let's see the full range of reviews of this offer. I think it's a bad idea. Absolutely absurd. That would be like a, a victim allowing uh, the burglar to set up uh, the home security system. To even entertain this shows to me how naive they are. Well, I think that's an incredible offer, okay? Earlier today, the White House finally came out strongly against themselves. Sarah Huckabee Sanders told a reporter that it is a proposal that was made in sincerity by President Putin, but President Trump disagrees with it. Yes, Trump disagrees, but he was impressed that it was a proposal made in sincerity. Donald Trump is not used to sincere proposals. <laughs> will you marry me? You will? Damn it. Okay. I'll go tell my wife. So, we know Trump is in Putin's pocket. The reason remains why. There's only two possible answers. Either Putin has something on him, or he's an idiot. <laughs> and there's plenty of proof on both sides. Yeah. He does everything Putin asks for, but on the other hand, he can't spell. 
He confused HIV with HPV. He doesn't understand why we fought the Civil War. And just take a look at a picture of the president playing in a big truck. <laughs> but whether he knows it or not, what's clear is that Trump cannot stop cozying up to Putin. That's why today we're holding an intervention. Mr. President, thank you for being here. I've written my thoughts down because this is so emotional. <laughs> Sir, you're here <laughs> because we love our country very much and you are in it. <laughs> and we need you to hear some things. <laughs> when you attack NATO, I feel like I'm being attacked. <laughs> and your friend Vladimir, he's not really your friend, okay? You're doing what he wants because you think it's fun, but what you don't realize is if you ever step out of line, he's going to show the world you're a big, dirty clown who loves the pee-pee. <laughs> so instead of sucking up to dictators, we want you to find a safer hobby, like volcano parkour. <laughs> or, or shark dentistry. <laughs> or heroin. We've got a facility waiting for you. You can go there anytime and we'll pay for it. Paul Manafort's already there. 